Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Little Educational Channel. So this is the time to reveal the results for the quiz contest which was conducted on 16th of August 2021. So this environmental science quiz is conducted every week on Monday on this platform to learn something about our environment and to prepare ourselves for every environmental science entrance examination. So this is going to be very very useful and very very interesting. So without much delay, let's get started. So those who don't know how to participate and what are the rules for the participation, you can pause this video and go through all these rules. So let's discuss the questions first. So the first question was, the plants growing under direct sunlight are known as what? And here, the correct option will be option number A. Yes, heliophytes are the plants which are growing under the direct sunlight and you should also know the other options which are Ceophytes or skyophytes. So the sciophytes are the shade loving trees. So these are the opposite of heliophytes, you can say. So these are the opposite. That means they are not growing or they don't love the sunlight. So they are photophobous plants. Also, they are called phobic means which you are not loving or which you are afraid of. So they are photophobous plants, they are ceophytes or skyophytes, which are shade loving, they are not sunlight loving. Next coming to the samophytes. So samophytes are the plants or trees that grow in sand or sandy soil. So it is not that every time it will be on sand, it can be also growing on the sandy soil, primarily in the deserts region they are seen. And dicots, you also know that they are the, the cotyledons, which are two cotyledons which are found in the seeds of the fruits. Then these are called the dicot plants. For example, mango, neem and what are monocots, they are having the single cotyledon which is for example in case of rice. Let's move into the second question. Second question was from the Lincoln index and the question was Lincoln index measures dash of a population and here the correct option will be option number C. Yes, this Lincoln index measures the population size and the formula is very very important. You should note down it is called as the formula which is the capture recapture method or mark recapture method this is called as Lincoln index which is used and the formula is this one you should note down the formula is number of marked in second sample that means number of marked animals in the second sampling so here two sampling are done divided by total number of animals caught in the second sample so you have to mark the animal then leave it into its surrounding then again catch those animals and then you will see whether the number of animals which are caught are having that mark or not is equal to number of marked organisms or animals in the first sampling divided by the size of the whole population that is the population size given by the capital N. So if you know all these three values then you will be able to find the size of the whole population that is the population size. So this is the formula number of organism marked in the second sample divided by total number of organism or animal caught in the second sample is equal to number of marked animals in the first sample divided by the total population size. Let's move to the third question. Third question was identify the mismatched pair and all the pairs are on your screen and here the correct option that is the mismatched pair is the prairies. Yes, prairies are the grasslands and in grasslands you will never see trees because the epiphytes are mostly growing on the trees and here all the other options are correctly matched that means Tundra regions, Tundra biome are known for the permafrost condition, savanna are having the acacia trees, coniferous forest are mostly having the evergreen trees and this option C will be the mismatched pair that means it will be the correct option. Time for the fourth question. The fourth question was the process of vernalization is practiced in which kind of countries and here the correct option will be option number A, vernalization process is practiced mostly in the cold countries and you should know what is vernalization it is the process of accelerating the ability of the flowering in plants yes in order to increase the ability accelerate the ability of flowering in plants this vernalization technique is practiced by exposing them to cold temperature yes the flowers the plants are exposed to the cold temperature and not every flower the flower and plants which are seen in the cold countries and this vernalization process was introduced to produce flowers at the low temperature which is in between 1 to 10 degrees Celsius. So this process helps to produce flower to accelerate the flowering in the low temperature that's why it is practiced in the temperature low temperature countries which are cold countries. 
let's move to the fifth question the fifth question was from the animal behavior the question was the behavior in which one animal is aggressive or attacks another animal then what happens the other animal responds by returning the aggression or submitting is called as what so this kind of behavior is known as agonistic behavior yes it is any social behavior related to fighting yes this term has broader meaning it is not always that it will fight or it will always do the fighting so this has the broader meaning than the aggressive behavior because it also includes retreat retreat means the animal can move behind or backward withdrawing from the fight and other things also are included in fighting that is to display the threat for conciliation all these things coming under the fighting procedure that is the agonistic behavior coming to the sixth question the sixth question was which gas is mainly produced due to incomplete burning of food so it, incomplete combustion or incomplete burning of food produces harmful gas that is carbon monoxide so it is a colorless gas you should note down it is a colorless it is a non-irritant orderless and tasteless toxic gas it is produced by the incomplete combustion of carbonaceous fuels such as wood petrol coal natural gas and kerosene all these things when are burnt incompletely then they produce the harmful gas that is carbon monoxide let's move to the seventh question so the seventh question was the process when the rocks that the river or sea is carrying knock against each other is called as what and this process is known as attrition so i'll give an example that in this picture you can see this river is taking the rocks along with it and in this way in the passage of time the rocks are knocking against each other or they are hitting against each other this process is known as attrition which is seen in case of river or sea and as a result what happens is due to the knocking against each other or the hitting against each other the rocks are becoming rounded in structure so this is the reason that is the attrition due to which most of the rocks or pebbles are rounded in structure let's move to the eighth question the eighth question was dash has been documented as the major risk factor of black foot disease and here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, it is not option number C. It will be none of these because air is argon. But here, black foot disease is caused by arsenic which formula is AS. So, most of you were also confused here. So, let's move to the ninth question. So, the ninth question was jellyfish such as calm jellyfish produce the bright flashes or bright lights to frighten their predator when which of the following reaction takes place. And here, the correct option will be option number C. When the luciferin chemical reacts with oxygen, it produces lights or flashes. In this bioluminescent organism, you should know these things. Bioluminescent organisms are the organisms which are using the luciferin complex. When it reacts with oxygen, the luciferase enzyme makes oxyluciferin and produces light so this is the reaction you should also know this one when the luciferin substrate present in the bioluminescent organism as you can see this is the c wave carrying millions of algae and phytoplanktons so they are also having the bioluminescent character also jellyfish are having and also fireflies are also having these characteristics when luciferin reacts with oxygen and the enzyme luciferase gives rise to oxyluciferin which produces light in this organism time for the final question the final question was very easy the question was which of the following has a wavelength less than the visible light and the options were radio and tv waves infrared uv and microwave and among them the correct option will be option number c uv rays are having the less wavelength than the visible light and you should note that the electromagnetic spectrum is also a very frequent last question and here as you can see the wavelength decreases from radio waves to gamma rays and you should know the sequence radio wave microwave infrared visible light ultraviolet x-ray and gamma rays so this is the decreasing wavelength or increasing frequency so this thing you should note down it is the increasing frequency or decreasing wavelength and here visible light is having more wavelength than the ultraviolet rays so now it's time to reveal the results for this quiz contest so four of our participants have secured 10 out of 10 marks they are akshay akanksha alka jain and khadija samreen so congratulations to all of you and other participants who have also done well 
आर फातिमा मोहम्मद जोएल गीता शर्मा राखी त्यागी अपूर्वा चैत्राली ज्योति दीक्षा कुमारी सुहावानी मोनिका सिंह तस्किन खान अर्चना एंड सुनंदा सो कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू ऑल ऑफ यू कीप अप द गुड वर्क एंड पार्टिसिपेट मोर टू बिकम द टॉप परफॉर्मर ऑफ द मंथ एंड इफ यू लाइक दिस डोंट फॉरगेट टू लाइक एंड शेयर टू दर फ्रेंड्स एंड सब्सक्राइब इफ यू हैवेंट सब्सक्राइब टिल नाउ टेक केयर सी यू गाइज इन आवर नेक्स्ट वीडियो